Hi guys, welcome back to Introduction to Kotlin. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be looking at functions in Kotlin. Functions are the building block of any program. They allow us to define code and reuse that code anywhere inside of our program. And of course, this is very useful. Our entry point function is of course a function as well. So this main function is a function. And naturally we can create functions to do multiple different things for us. Here we have a function that takes the average of two doubles and then returns a double. You can see that the function signature starts with the keyword fun, followed by the function name, which is AVG, and then and the parameter list. In this case, we have two parameters and they each have a type. So it's parameter colon type. And then you have the return type, which is colon and then the return type. And then the block of the function or the function body is inside of these curly brackets. And here we have this return type. So we're saying return a plus b divided by two. And of course we can call our function by typing in the name of the function, opening some parentheses and putting in the parameters. So the actual values that we want to pass to the function. So 12.0 and 10.0, they get put in for a and b respectively. And then this gets run on it and it gets returned to our println function, which then prints it out to the console. You can see that our average is 11.0. So 12 plus 10 divided by two is 11. This is a more general way to think about a function. Here we have our fun keyword, then we have our function name, and then inside of it, it has n parameters. So parameter one, two, all the way up to parameter n. And each parameter also has their own type. So type one, type two, all the way up to type n. And then of course we have our return type and then the function body. So in Kotlin, you can write a function that has n parameters. And of course you want to include the return type except for in very specific cases. In one case where you don't need to have an explicit return type is with what's called a single expression function. I've rewritten our average function into what's called a single expression function. Rather than having the return block and rather than having even the function block, which is using the curly bracket brackets. We just have our single line here, which is a plus b divided by two, and we have an equal sign. And you can see that the IDE actually infers the type that is going to be returned. So it says for us that this function is going to return a double. And that's because the compiler will automatically infer the type of this single line expression. Now this only works for single expression functions. If our function has a block body, aka if it has multiple lines, then it will not work this way. And you can see here that if we run it, we still get 11.0. Now keep in mind that unlike a language like Scala, Kotlin doesn't automatically infer return types for functions that have more than one expression. So that means that if we had multiple lines in this function, we couldn't write it this way. So we can write functions that return nothing and the return type for a function that returns nothing is called a unit. This corresponds with the return type of void in Java. So if you've ever programmed in Java, if you have a function that returns nothing, you preface it with void. Unit is basically the same thing in Kotlin. We don't actually have to write the return type here, so we can completely remove this unit type and it won't cause an error. And our function here just takes the name Jack and then puts it into a println statement that says hello. Jack. The unit type declaration is completely optional, as mentioned before, so we can write the function without it if we want to. We can also create functions that do not take in any parameters. Our print hello function doesn't take in a parameter, and our get x function doesn't take in a parameter, but it also returns an integer. Print hello will just print out hello Jack, and then get x will take in nothing and just return 10, which we can then assign to a variable and then print out to the screen. And as expected, you can see this says hello Jack and 10. So you can put any number of parameters inside of a function, even if it's zero. Kotlin supports default arguments in function declarations. You can specify a default value for a function parameter. And this default value is used when the corresponding argument is omitted from the function call. If you look at the function that we have here called display greeting, this function has two strings as its arguments and we are calling it with 
one string, so we're calling it with how are you, and so the name string is automatically assigned to guest. So this will automatically print out, hello guest, how are you? And you can see here that this is exactly what happens, and if we want to override this guest string, we can pass in another string. For instance, we can pass in Jack, and now you can see that Jack is corresponding with the name string, and how are you is going in for the message string. One caveat of this type of function is that it is positional. So you can see here that I've switched name and message inside of the function declaration, and so now we have to put in the name and the message. If we remove one string, however, you'll see here that now we get an error. So this doesn't automatically assume that this first string that we're passing in here is the message because we have this other default value. So basically, if you have two or more parameters in a function and one of them has a default value, you want that parameter to be to the right of any value that does not have a default value. We can, however, get around this by using what are called named arguments. So Kotlin allows you to specify the names of the arguments that you're passing to the function. This makes the function calls themselves more readable, and it also allows you to pass the value of a parameter selectively if other parameters have default values. As I mentioned before, you want to have your default values to the right, but you can see here that if I specifically say in the function call that this string is the message string, then it will, in fact, assign this to the message string, and it will print out the default value of guest, even though our name is to the left and our message is to the right. And you can see when we execute this, we get hello guest, how are you? Here's a little bit of a more complicated function. This one's called sum series. It has three integers being passed into it, two of which have default values. So A and D both have the default value of one, and then N does not have a default value. So if we call sum series and we specify N equals 15, it will then work properly, so it will automatically assign a to 1, n to 15, and d to 1, and then it will execute this calculation. And of course, we're putting this inside of a println statement so that we can see it in the console, and we get 112. Now we can also use named arguments for the ones that have default values. So we can say n equals 15, a equals 15, and d equals 10, and this will automatically assign the values to the appropriate argument. So even though these are out of order, n is in the middle, whereas in our function call, n is the first one that we call, it does automatically find the correct arguments. And in fact, with this function, we could call 10 comma n equals 15, and this would work properly with the positional arguments because 10 would be passed in for A, and then N would be passed in for 15. However, if we try to put a comma here and then put in another number, it will not automatically be put in for D. To make this work, we need to explicitly call D equals 10. And in this case, we get 1,120. Kotlin also has what are called var arg functions. These allow us to put in a variable number of arguments that even though we have one argument, which is of type var arg and a double, we can put in as many arguments as we want. So up here we're calling six arguments and we're using a for loop to iterate through our var arg number. We can even call this with two arguments and we can call it with five arguments and we can even call this function with no arguments and it will not throw an error. A var arg parameter is internally represented by an array inside of the function body. So basically what's happening is the compiler takes the collection of numbers that we're passing in as our arguments and then creates an internal array which it then allows us to iterate through. So even though we don't see an array of doubles inside of this function, there is one in the number variable. Now as a minor aside, we could rewrite this function in a much simpler way as return num.sum and this will sum all of the numbers up like we were doing before. If we run this program, you can see that we get various different outputs and the last one also gives us 0.0, .0 so there's no null in this function either. We can also pass an array into our var arg, and we do this by using what's called the spread operator. So you see here that I'm calling sum with an asterisk before the v, which is our array. So this array is also specifically made as an array of doubles, because the compiler will get mixed up if we try to spread it if we don't give it a type. Each number gets fed in 
like we were putting them in individually as arguments, then it becomes an array, which then is able to be summed together. A function may only have one var arg parameter. This means that we can't have multiple var arg parameters inside of our functions. And if we have other parameters inside of a var arg function, then the values of those parameters can be passed using the named argument syntax. So for instance, in a bit of a contrived way, I'm just going to add another argument here called sum. This will be another double and we'll just have a print ln statement which will print out this sum. And you can see now that we've put this in here we've got all of these errors with all of our functions and that's because they're missing this sum parameter. As mentioned before the way to fix this is to use a named parameter. So we need to specifically say okay well we want to pass in sum. So I'm putting sum in as 1.1, sum in as 1.5, sum in as 10.3, and sum in as 13.1. Keep in mind that even if sum is a different type than the var arg argument, it will not work properly. So even if this sum was not a double and it was a string, it would still ask us to put it in as a named parameter. Another thing to mention, Java doesn't support what are called top level functions. This means that functions in Java need to be wrapped inside of a class. In Kotlin, however, functions do not need to be wrapped inside of a class. They can be outside of a class. Now this may seem obvious, but if you came from Java, it may seem a little weird. Obviously our main function is a top level function and so is our sum function on all of the other functions that we've written inside of our applications thus far. When we get to classes, we'll talk more about methods and uh, how those work. But for now, we're, we're writing mostly just top level functions. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.